Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Gang. Welcome and thanks for hanging out with me today. In this video, I'm gonna create my own anthropology mirror, the Grimming Primrose. All time favorite for everyone. It is one of the least that I want to do it so far. And now I think I know how to do it myself. And with that, let's do it. This is 24 by 36 inches bathroom mirror. Flameless, obviously, with a bar for hanging on the back. So I'm gonna make this bad boy to be an antique primrose inspired. But before that, let's clean it and cover it up for protection. And I don't want to annoy you guys by the reflection during the project. Ideally, I'm gonna flame it out and try to curve the edge on top, then decorating and stuff later. This is a glass cutter. As you can see, there is a tiny wheel here for cutting, and it can open from the back to refill the oil. Follow lubricate the wheel to get a smooth score line, that's what they say. But it is my first time doing this. I am pretty sure that I cannot do the curve cutting. So I think it's better to cut the straight line in angle. I just mark up the line on the mirror like this. That probably works for me. What they say, we have to put on a little pressure when scoring the line, making the scratching sound. Then use the backside tapping over it to make the cracking line go down deeper. And then we have to lift it up for snapping it. As you can see, in this case, I put the pencils underneath. This is the moment of truth. And oopsie, it's not breaking separately right away as what I think they say. I don't know why. And it's not even breaking at the score line I did. Not a good sign, but it's not that bad for the first time. So I have to repeat it some more at the side to make it look curvy. Finger crossed though, but I'll do my best. And here it is. It's such a mess, but I still can make it work. We will see. So I used the wet stone rubbing down to unchop the egg. You literally can see the bar at the back showing up by the failure cutting. But it's okay, it's not gonna ruin this project. And if you notice, this is not the cracking. It is the stain from the back. Old mirror effect, oxidation or something. Anyhow, I'm just tapping it for more secure because it still can cut my finger out. Alright guys, this is how it looks. You see I made it in this side I think it's more opened up wider than the vertical side it was earlier. And the second corner, I did it off the camera, which is it's quite intense. And after the hardest part is done, I flip it over, and I use a macrame cord attaching all over the edge. So I use hot glue starting on one end at the bottom, running through all entire of it. For framing, I use two different sides of this vinyl tubing, the small and the bigger one. The big one is gonna be the real frame later. It's one inch I guess, but the smaller tube I don't know exactly, but it just fit inside the bigger one. So what I do is just using the smaller tube attaching over on top of the macrame. I also start gluing from the corner at the bottom, exactly the same process I did with the macrame earlier. But when it comes to the arch area, I just go passing away nicely as you can see to get a nice curvy line to it. So that's why I did the macrame at first, because it's gonna be a gap between the tube and the mirror at the archie. And the macrame already sealed up the sharp edge. At least for protection, it makes sense. And now we can imagine how archy it's gonna be. Alright, it's time for the real framing. I am gonna do the bottom section first. So I measure the big tubing over the length around an inch for each side, then cut it off. And I split down in the middle all the way with the cutter. You see I tape it to stay put when I do that. It's gonna help me get a nice fine line straight cut. Next up, I hot glue inside the tube. 
and then they put it down covering up that small tubing which is I leave the end around an inch over the corner so this is the idea to framing out this mirror And this is how the bottom part is framed. After the hot glue is dried, I would say this vinyl tubing turned out pretty firm and strong. To be honest, it's way better than I thought it would be. So now I can go on working at the other side. At the corner, I want a nice 45 joint to it. So what I need to do is just put down the tube right next at the angle. And then mark up to where they're gonna hit in diagonal. Then I use the tape as a guide to get a fine line cutting. And I'm cutting the same way to the other tube for joining at the corner as well. So now I'm running it all the way. You can see this tubing is big enough to covering up everything at the arch area. No one knows there was a mess cutting. I am so relieved, I would say. I also flip it and sealed it up at the back, just to make sure everything stays tight together. And now it's time for decorating. I am using this regular thumbtacks, applying over on top the whole flame. I'm just basically making a line in the middle and pushing down the thumbtacks line up next to each other. But before we go painting, of course, let's do the primer and wait for it to dry. This is the real deal DIY of this project. I am gonna show you how to create my own molding, or lace, appliques, whatever you say. For this one, I'm just drawing in style of the Grimming Primrose. I'm trying to make it look alike as much as possible. This one right now I'm drawing a centerpiece crown. And the easy tip to make it even, you just only do one side and fold it in half. And then you cut them at the same time, you will get it symmetrically. So this is an idea for you. You can draw it your own style, or just print out whatever you like to create your own one of a kind. And now what you see is the bottom side legs. This is I think the original look like. After we have the patterns, so what they do is just stick the pattern down to the back side of the microwave plate. Then flip it and forming it up with the hot glue, following up the pattern. Now you got an idea, right? I would say it would be better if you have any clear glass or acrylic plate. That would be easier. And when it's dried, you just peel it out. You see I use a cutter for that? I think I should let it dry out a little longer. Maybe it would be easier to take it off, I would say. Then I'm just trimming it out the messy and clean the line all around. And last but not least, I glued out the skewers at the back to make this guy stably strong. And I'm gonna do the same process to the legs. Here they are. Now you see I done the primer already. And another tip is, if you want to get some more details and textures, 
You just add on another layer on top after the first is set and dry. You will get it more defined. I also add the toothpicks down here for attaching the flame. So I mark up where to go. Then I use a sewing needle pushing in to create a hole for it to fit in. And I seal up the gap at the front and the back, that's all. And this is the final look before paint. I already obsessed with it. It looks like original one to me right now. About painting, this is only shade of the acrylic gold color I got it on hand. The first coat literally nothing. Actually this one works well. Maybe it's about the vinyl or bad primer or something. So I'm pretty sure it's down for 3 coats. And yes, this got me 3 coats. I would say it's pretty good so far. Very shiny and yellow, Victorian golden. So I mixed up the regular brow color with the water, brushing around. And I used paper towel, rubbing it off gently. To reduce that shine and yellowy, to make it more bronze like I think the Creaming Cream Rose has. Lastly, I do the antique effect, easily with the black mixing water all around in deep area. This is an optional, I apply a thin clear coat as I always do. I would say personally, I like durable stuff, that's why I end up with it to all my projects. And that's it, let's do the reveal. Alright guys, thanks for staying till here, and if this kind of your thing, I am too cringe to say please take a moment to subscribe, hit the like, the bell, any buttons down there, any comments, I would love to hear from you. Bye for now, peace.